Hello class, this is the lecture for 13-1, and normally I don't do lectures for the dash one parts of the textbook, but I feel like Forrester kind of throws you into the deep end and expects you to swim right there from the beginning regarding polar coordinates. So I'm gonna try to introduce you a little bit more before you have to sink or swim with regard to this polar coordinate. So you can see here, I've got an example of polar graph paper and I'll give you some of this, but um, you probably need to photocopy some more of your own to be able to get through homeworks and find these things. But uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Now, one of the uh, questions that somebody might ask you as a broad introduction to polar coordinates is, how do you get from here to there? If you're standing a little bit that way and over there, how am I going to get to you? Well, the fact, the way I just gestured gives it away. I'm not going to do what every math book does where you say, okay, your friend Sally is located over there at the point four comma three, so why don't you walk uh, four units to the uh, right, and then three units up. That's stupid. Nobody ever does that. You would never do that. I mean, the only reason we do that here is because in St. Louis, all the roads typically go north, south, or east, west. But if you had a helicopter and you could go the best, quickest way to your friend's house, you would say, where's my friend? Go in that direction the shortest possible distance as the crow flies. Just take me there. So in this case, that would mean that you would turn some angle this way, and then you would walk. How far would you walk? Well, it's, I picked these numbers on purpose. Can you see why? That's right. It's Mr. Pythagoras tells you that if you have a 3-4 triangle, the hypotenuse must be 5. So if the hypotenuse is 5 and the sides are all nice, that means that the angles are going to be wretched. So let's uh, turn the calculator on and let's do arctan uh, rise over uh, run. And we can see that that is 0.64 radians. This angle in here, I'll call it theta, is equal to 0.6435 radians. And if I do a little switcheroo and jump over to degrees, and then I do that same operation again, I get that that's about equal to 36.87 degrees. So you can see we've had a lot of experience in this class, first semester trigonometry, with finding sides of triangles. So I hope you can see that there's that formula that we're always going to be using, that if we've gone to some point over there at uh, x comma y, then we can just make a triangle out of that and say that this distance r over there, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So um, if we wanted to go the other way, however, if we needed to find x and y given r and theta, which trig functions could we use? So let me see here. What does that mean? That we know some uh, distance Let's see here. So we know r and theta, and we're trying to find y. So I look at this triangle, and I say, all right, I've got the angle, and I've got the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for the opposite. So which trig function involves opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. Sine of theta equals uh, that y over r. And if I were looking for x, that would be adjacent. So clearly I'm going to use cosine equals x over r. All right, so now let's solve those two equations for x and y respectively. We have that x equals r times cos uh, theta and y equals r times sine theta. And a minute ago, we said that uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And we found uh, that the, we did arctan, but tan theta is y over x. All right, so these four equations are the foundation of an entirely different way of orienting yourself to points on a graph 
paper that rather than using rectangular or Cartesian, named after René Descartes, uh, that rather than using any of those kinds of ways of getting there with x comma y, we're going to try a new way of getting there. And so we can get to places by saying you turn some angle theta and you walk out some distance r, and that's going to be the shortest path to get there. So the way we're going to uh, plot these points is we're going to have graph paper that looks like this, and we're going to turn to some points r comma theta. That instead of x and y, that's the old school, uh, that that is the way we did things in the past, we're now going to have some radius out from the center and an angle that we've turned. Now, one of my beefs with the system is that I typically think about turning the angle first and then going out some distance r. So you remember that over here, straight to the right, that that is zero degrees, zero radians. That's where we begin. So you think about a little person um, standing at the origin, or as it's called in polar coordinates, the pole, and they're facing off to the right, and then they turn, and then they walk out a distance, okay? So for example, if we wanted to say uh, three comma, uh, 120 degrees. Where is that? Well, first of all, let's try to orient ourselves. What are these little um, uh, uh, angles flying out here? What are, what are the angles that they're giving us? Well, clearly, we remember that all the way around is 360, straight up is 90, and 180, and 270. Those are the good guys. Those are the, the easy ones to remember. But uh, they've given us more than that. What are these little spokes, these, these ones flying out from the center? Well, I can see that, you know, cutting 45 in half right there, there's 45. And let's see here. We've cut 90 into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces. So 90 divided by 6, uh, let's see here. So 90 divided by 6, 6 goes into 9 one time, remainder 3. 6 goes into 30 five times. So every one of these is 15 degrees. So 15, yikes, I don't know nothing about no 15, but 30, that's why they did it. 60, 40, 45, 60, and then over here is going to be 75. So every one of these on polar graph paper is 15 degrees, or we will have some radians, sorry, where that is going to be pi over 12 and pi over 6 and pi over 4 and pi over 3 and 5 pi over 12 and pi over 2 and that kind of stuff. So that needs to still be part of your psyche. But anyway, uh, we were trying to find out where this point 3 comma 120 is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off facing to the right and I'm going to turn until I'm facing that direction, that I turn 120 degrees and then I walk out 1, 2, 3. So that spot right there, big hairy dot for you, at 3 comma 120, okay? So then let's try another one. Let's try 3 comma 300. Where's that going to be? All right, so uh, we need to go 360 back, 15 is 345, and 330 is right there and 315 and 300. Okay, so here we are on the 300 spoke, and then we walk out one, two, three. So there's the spot right there, three comma 300 degrees. All right, are you ready for the weird one? Here's the weird one. The weird one would be negative three comma 300. Negative three. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I recommend, turning the angle first. We're going to go ahead and turn to that 300 degree, and then let's see where we're facing. So if we have a little person who was started off facing to the right, and they turn all the way around until they're facing the 300 degree, we would have our face pointed that way, big arrow to say where they're facing. And now, instead of going forward in the direction they're facing, it's negative, so they're going to go back opposite direction. So if they're facing down and to the right, and then they walk backwards three units, 
they're going to end up in the exact same spot as 3 comma 120. That this can also be written as 3 comma 300. So this is why we don't teach polar coordinates to elementary school and middle school kids, is because every point has an infinite number of ways that it can be expressed, which can be overwhelming when you're young, but you guys have your big boy leggings on and you're ready for this. So polar coordinates, r comma theta, we had four formulas that we talked about. You really need to internalize these four formulas here in orange. You need to have those be part of you and then orient yourself to polar graph paper. Photocopy some polar graph paper. Get yourself some polar graph paper. I know some stores sell them uh, six on a side of a page. That's pretty helpful. And uh, then we need to be able to find where we are on polar graph paper. So here's an example of what I'm talking about, six on a page. See you soon. Sweet nectar of life.